Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. and we are all back from Vermont. Uh, Michelle actually just did her first kind of full night of imaging with the new setup. Uh, we got almost all of it completed while I was there. A couple of little parts and pieces that uh, needed to get there to finish it up completely. But she's up and running with Nina, which is really nice because with an observatory like hers, you know, to be able to kind of control the roof, to be able to do your flats, eventually get a camera rotator, have all of those features that you just can't do with the ASI Air is super nice. And so obviously a steep learning curve. We've been on the phone and uh, texting quite a bit since then, uh, but she is able to get it up and running and get some great results. So I did want to just follow up this week with the Photoshop tutorial. Before we did that though, I actually got to the point where I had about the same amount of HA and O3 with my 140 that I did with the SCA 260. So I thought it'd be fun just to do a quick comparison. First of all, between full frame and APS-C. This is 1300 millimeters at full frame. And as you can see, it's a larger field of view uh, than about 950 millimeters at APS-C, both with the same amount of data roughly and just an STF. The detail and some of the contrast uh, is really starting to show up here in the 140. Um, obviously, we got some great results, you know, as we zoom in. Unfortunately, I can't get them to zoom exactly the same. One is going to be just a little bit bigger than the other. But when we zoom in, you know, I was really happy with the detail we were able to get with that big reflector. Uh, but then when we see, you know, from, from a refractor standpoint, just how much more uh, detail we're able to get. Let me zoom out one just so it, I guess it's fair. Well, yeah, as close as I can get it. You know, it's just really interesting to just kind of compare the two, even though this has more focal length, we're able to get a little bit more um, detail. You can see the same in the full width half maximum. This actually does perform pretty well in my skies at about 2.0 to 2.1, and we're getting about 1.6 to 1.8, 1.7-ish with the HA filter on the 140. And then really quickly, we can go over the final images. So here is the 140 on the right, and then the one that we're gonna show you guys how to finish today on the left. The 03 is really starting to show up nice and strong here. Uh, we probably would need a little bit more time with this scope, but this does a really nice job showing the HA structure. And uh, I really just like how, as you get more integration time, you really get a lot more contrast in the nebula. If we go back to an earlier version, we can see that at like four hours or five hours of date, I think this had, obviously the stars aren't in this one, but not nearly as much contrast. The uh, O3 is not nearly as good. So guys, I always know it's tough to put in that additional time. I like doing things like this where I do a few edits along the way. And so I thought I'd share because obviously the overall point of this channel is to help you guys learn and real world hands-on examples to me are always better than kind of theory or guessing or you know, stating an opinion. Sometimes it's nice to just be able to compare some stuff side by side. So without further ado, we're gonna dive into that stuff that I had already filmed about a week and a half ago. And it's just gonna end with the normal outro. So this is the intro and outro. So guys, thank you. Hopefully it is of value to you. And we'll be back to, you know, kind of a regular schedule on Fridays uh, starting next week now that we're back to normal. So clear skies, guys. Okay, here we go. I'll do this real quick, guys, just for the sake of time. I'm gonna hit Command J. I'm gonna grab a levels. There's a little tail right here, and I'm gonna drag that just before that so we don't clip, and then bump this up a little. And what I'm doing is I'm basically getting the black point a little lower, and then bringing up the midtones. So the midtones were there, just kind of bringing them up a hair before, after, then I'm gonna hit shift click, command E or control E on a PC to combine those into one layer. Then I'm gonna do a camera raw filter. And guys, if I go through every one of these, it is just going to be a really long episode. Um, so just my thought process real quick. You could do a ton of contrast like that. I like to do all of these in smaller steps because if I, I'm gonna do a little contrast, but I'm also gonna bring the blacks down a little bit and bring the whites up, which also is another way to add contrast. So rather than just ripping a bunch of each one, I'm kind of doing it in smaller steps. There's the before and after. See the highlights. If you go up, obviously you lose the detail. I never really go more than plus or minus about 10 on any of these. Small changes, guys, that's the key. A lot of small changes. I tend to usually give this one or two clicks to the blue and then one or two to the magenta. 
very small, almost not noticeable. Let's go two, yeah, let's go one. And then little vibrance, couple saturation, and that's it for adding color. If you wanna add a gentle, emphasis on gentle curve. I usually recommend, you know, right about this quartile and then somewhere in this quartile. And as you can see, it's a very small tug. I don't think we really need to add any red or, eh, I might add a little blue there. And then if we wanna get the blue out of the background, we can take this slider over here and just drag it to the right a little bit so that the blue is really just hanging out right in this area before, after, a little cleaner background. We can check for green, I always recommend this, give this a little pull down, see if there's any green kind of lurking in there. So that's where it was. Yeah, I might just give it just a tiny little, so there's before, after. These curves are very sensitive. I always pull from the middle. If you pull down here, it's gonna be way more strong because that's where all the data is. I kind of pull away from the data, so it's more of a diagonal effect. Doesn't hit it as hard. And then we've got our HSL tabs. Can really, this is what I like about Photoshop is you can really impact, you know, the look of the image quite a bit. But I don't really wanna play with these too much. I was pretty happy with the colors that we were able to get, I might take the aqua a little bit more to the blue, and then maybe the purples a little bit more to the blue, because then we can kind of use those purples in a way that's a little bit more usable. Let's see magenta is where that's showing up. Kind of like the magenta a little bit to the left. Um, saturation, I might just give aqua, blue, and purple a little bit more without having to add any to the red, and then let's see the luminance. Do we wanna bring up the red just a little bit before or after? And then let's see the blue and then the purple. Purple's not doing too much. What about aqua? Okay. You know, we could play around a little bit more in there, but for the sake of the timeliness before, after, I say, guys, you can make a big uh, difference in Photoshop in a short amount of time. There you go. It's always not a bad idea just to check color balance, just to make sure it's kind of looking the way you want in terms of that. I am just gonna speed through selective color because this would take way too long to go through step by step. Okay, there's that selective color before, after. Again, just got a little bit more pop out of it, a little bit more depth. I say depth, like this area is a little bit washed out. When we do that, it just kind of makes it pop a little bit more. And then, again, for the sake of time, three strip look is a good way to add a little bit of saturation, kind of even out the low and high areas. And then for some final, just bit of contrast with no effect on the color, we're gonna do the film stock look before, after. And you can see it really makes this front and center by kind of darkening this area and then brightening that up a little bit. I'm probably gonna turn it down just a little bit. And all of these things are just really small. You know, they're small changes, but they add up. So there's out of camera raw, that change, that change, that change, that change. It's not a huge thing. I'm gonna create a group, but if we turn it off and then on all together, they do make a fairly large change. Shift click, Command E to make a new layer. And then now I'm gonna do that final round of denoise. And here I'm gonna use Topaz, not to the new photo AI that's collecting a lot of uh, flack from people. In this case, we are just going to use the old school Topaz which I think does a really good job and doesn't add um, any artifacts. So people say, oh, it adds artifacts. Let's zoom in 
uh, quite a bit here and we'll let it work and you will see there are no artifacts. So this little area there, look all through here. There are absolutely no added details or artifacts. Even these areas where it's just soft, faint H uh, O3 data, it's the same over here. Guys, I'm telling you, Denoise does a great job. I'm just giving it a little bit of enhanced sharpening just to offset the effect of the Denoise. Um, and we're going to go ahead and apply that. Okay, there we go. I'm going to highlight both of those, and then I'm going to save as vid1 PPS for post Photoshop. Okay, okay, and then I, I still am old school, and I, I do like the screen stars method. I think it does a nice job. Real quick, I did want to pause uh, before I forgot and just say thank you guys for getting to 5,000 subscribers. Uh, it's a really awesome achievement. I'm really grateful to you guys and humbled by this. When I started the channel a year ago, I never would have thought probably maybe 1,000 at best, um, but to be at 5,000 and we actually beat it before the end of the month. The goal is to do it by the very end of May. We had um, several days to spare. So that was really cool. So thank you guys so much for all of your support and appreciation, your comments, your feedback, all of that stuff is the reason I continue to do it. And for those of you guys that aren't subscribed, I hope that you will hit that button and just become a part of our growing community. Uh -huh.